So welcome to section two. And in this section, I want to delve a little bit more deeply into PHP MyAdmin. In the previous section, we had our quick win. We created a database called Company, and then we used a CSV import to actually create the table and populate it with 100 records. We then went to the front end, we created some code which would actually read the values from the database and actually present them in a browser. So that was the quick win. We've tested everything, we know things work. So now we can take a step back and go into a little bit more depth. Now, the first thing I want to do is to just do a little bit more practice on creating those databases and actually manually creating a database table and manually inserting some records. So let's go ahead and we'll create a new database. So click on the home icon here in the top left and then click on the databases tab. Now the database I'm going to create is a little school database. Let's imagine we've got some pupils and teachers in there. So let's have a my school database. Doesn't matter what you call it and click on create. So that database has been created. We can see it here on the left hand side and in here as well, my school. If we click on that. So the first thing I want to do is to create a new table and I'm going to call this one pupils and I'm going to put four columns in there and click on go. So there's my table has been created, but we've got no information in here yet. We've got these four columns. And the first thing I need to do is to have an ID. Now the ID is my way of uniquely identifying this particular record. It's going to be an integer field. And over on the right hand side, A underscore I stands for auto increment. So this is going to be a unique number that is assigned to each record, starting with one, two, three, etc. Now MySQL will actually take care of that for us. And the next thing I want to do is to select this as the primary key. And I'll discuss that later. The next field is going to be first name. That is going to be var char, a variable character, and a limit of say 50. The next one is going to be surname. And we're going to have the same thing, a var char with a limit of 50 variable character. And the last one is date of birth, which will be a date field. So that's those selected. Now, as you can see, there's lots of different options here. We won't be going through them all, but I will cover some of the main ones in future lessons. So click on save. So that's my table created. I can see it on the left hand side here under the my school database. Now, obviously there are no records in there. If I click on the pupils table, I can see we've got an empty result set. But what I will draw your attention to is the MySQL code here. And it's quite a good habit to get into to actually read this and it will help you in future lessons. Now you can see it says select star from pupils limit 0, 30. So if I had 30 records or more, what it would do was select all of those records and display them in this space down here. Now we have come across something similar. If you flick back to our quick win file, we had a query which was select star from users and that selected every record from the users table. So quickly we're building up a way to actually write some SQL code and then use it in our PHP files later on. Now the next step is to actually insert some records and we can see here we've got the insert tab. So we'll click on there and we've got this insert form. Now the ID field, we have said that that is an auto incrementing field. So I do not want to enter any value in there. The first name, let's have Peter. The surname, let's have Smith. And let's select the date of birth, but just change the year to say 2009 and click on go. So we can see that's been successful. We can see the SQL code here. We're inserting into the pupils table. We've got these four columns and the values of null, Peter Smith and the date of birth. Now, obviously the reason that was null, we left that blank. But if we click on browse, we can see that that value has actually been filled in for us. There we go, ID of one. Let's go ahead and insert a second record. So again, leaving the ID blank, the first name, let's have uh, Sam and Sam Jones. 
and Sam Jones, another date of birth here. Let's select the dates and change the year to 2007 and click on go. And again, that has been successful. Now, as a developer, you would not want your client to be accessing this backend here. So they would not be inserting their records from this system. They would actually have a nice front end, a nice form, fill in the data, press submit, that would be sent to a PHP script, which would then populate that database. Now, if a client isn't using a database currently, then they probably have some sort of list system or maybe even a spreadsheet. And that's what I want to look at very quickly. Now I'm going to use a Google spreadsheet. You can use Excel or numbers or any other variant you, you have got. Um, but I'm going to click on new, click on Google sheets and create a spreadsheet here. So I'm going to give my spreadsheet a title of uh, pupils and then fill in some headers here. Now we had four columns, which were ID. We had the first name, we had the surname and we had the date of birth. Now I know I've got two records in my database currently. So the ID I could put in here next would be three and the one after could be four. But if somebody was to come along and insert some records in the meantime, I would actually be duplicating this and then end up with an error. So what I want to do is leave that blank and let the system take care of those numbers for me. And in the first name, let's have James. Let's have James Green. And he has a date of birth of 2007-0201. And we'll put one more in. Let's have Jane. Let's have Jane Smith. 2006 10 10. Now I could carry on entering some more records and if you want to do that you can but I think you get the idea. So the next thing is to actually export this so file download as and CSV or comma separated values. So that's downloaded I'm going to go back to my database make sure I'm in the pupils table and I'm going to import that file. I'm going to choose the file there it is, pupils. Now you can see straight away, it's recognized that as a CSV file and the format has changed to CSV. And just above that, we've got this partial import. Now this is important. It says number of rows to skip. Now obviously I want to skip that first row. I do not want this first row to end up as a record in my database table. So I'm going to skip one row. The defaults can be left as they are, and I can click on go. And that import has been successful. So if I click on browse, I should now have four records in my table, and indeed I do. Now, as I said, these are not ideal methods for actually inserting records. We want a front end, a nice form, user comes along, enters the data and submits. And we'll be taking care of that in future lessons. But just as a quick recap, we have created a new database, manually created a table, and then looked at two ways to actually insert some records, manually through this form here on the Insert tab, and then by importing a CSV, which was an export from a spreadsheet.